Hello and welcome to this presentation on moth traps for people new to the world of moths and moth trapping. In this presentation we will explain the following points which will hopefully be sufficient for you to get started on your moth journey. At the end of the presentation you will find links to websites where you can purchase the equipment and also gain help and support. So here you can see a range of moth traps of different designs and also different lamp types. The permutations are endless and given that many people do either construct their own or adapt existing traps, the possibilities are endless. In this presentation though, we are going to concentrate on the main types. So what is a moth trap? Well, we need a container to collect the moths in without them coming to any harm. We generally use a light to attract the moths to the trap. Baffles can be used, which help to prevent the moth from flying straight past without getting caught. Um, and these traps are used at night when it is dark and can be opened and inspected in the morning before releasing the moths unharmed. Why do we want to trap moths? Well, obviously the first main reason is just to enjoy the beauty and variety of moths. Have you ever thought about how many moths there are, how many different types of moths there are in your garden? We can learn about moths, their life cycles, food plants and specific types of habitat. There's just so much to learn. By recording the moths we see and submitting their records, we're contributing to the knowledge base which enables us to see changing trends in distribution and flight times for all these different species. And this then leads into the conservation um, effort for moths. And it's a great hobby you can do either at home, even on holiday, and it's something you can do all year round. How can I attract and see moths? Without buying any equipment at all, once it's dark or, or going dark, have a look around a bright light outside, maybe in your porch or outside your garage, and you will often find moths flying about. Going out at dusk with a head torch and net can be very productive, especially if you look around good nectar sources such as buddleia, verbena, nicotinia, and later in the year, ivy flowers. Just leaving a light on in your toilet or bathroom overnight with a window open can attract a few moths. Just be sure to let them out again in the morning once you have had a look at them and identified them. Sugaring is a method of attracting moths to something sweet that emulates nectar and can be quite successful, particularly later in the year when nectar sources are becoming harder to find for moths. Sheet and light is another very simple and cheap way of attracting moths. Using a bulb and a white sheet, moths will be attracted to the light shining on the sheet and many will land and you can also use a net to catch anything flying around to have a look at them and identify them. A few clear pots that you can put the moths into will help with this. Then finally we have a moth traps of varying sorts which is what we're going to concentrate on in this presentation. So the first trap that I'm going to talk about is the Robinson trap. This is a large round trap with a collar and funnel and the light. The collar is often clear, although not always, and this allows you to see some of the moths before you even open it up. The Robinson trap can either be run off the mains or from a generator if you're using a mercury vapour bulb. I'll talk about bulbs a little later in the presentation. Um, or if you're using an actinic bulb, you could run it off a battery. I think the majority of Robinson traps do use mercury vapour bulbs, although the one that I have uses two 30 watt actinic bulbs and does work very well. These traps are considered to be the best in terms of size of catch, although that is also very much dependent on the type of bulb that you are using. However, they are the most expensive traps. When I look, they seem to start at around £340 and they do go up to over £450 again dependent on the type of bulb. These are the largest of the traps and do take up quite a bit of space. Something to consider before you buy one because where are you going to store this when you're not using it? 
these these do not collapse. The second trap that I'm going to talk about is the Heath trap. This is generally a cube with a funnel and light and baffle arrangement. Sometimes the main body is all welded together, but you can get them that clip together, so making them much more portable and easier to store. Like a Robinson, they can be run off the mains or a generator, or if you're using an actinic or LED bulb, then they can be run off a battery. The Heath trap is generally fitted with an either an actinic or an LED bulb, which can make them much more economical to run than a mercury vapour trap. The traps can also be much cheaper to buy than the Robinson, starting at around £125 and going all the way up to over £300, depending on the type that you buy. This is a popular trap with good catches. The third type of trap that we'll talk about is a Skinner trap. This is often a much simpler construction, a box that slots together with clear plastic sheets that funnel the moths down through a slot into the trap. The bulb is positioned on a bar across and just above the slot. The one you can see top left in the image is of made of plywood. The one top right is a collapsible metal box that actually folds up into a plastic case, making it very portable. I've even taken this abroad with me on holiday. And the one at the bottom is fabric around a metal frame, making it very light. Like the two previous traps, the means of powering these is the same. So either mains, generator or battery, and they can be run with any of the different types of bulbs. Again, this is a cheaper alternative to a Robinson trap, starting at around £135, and depending on the type you go for, can be over £300. There are other types of trap that you will see advertised, and there are also many mothers who like to construct their own. So if you do know what you're doing with the electrical side of things, this might be an option for you. Certainly, most of us have probably managed to borrow a trap from an established mother before taking the plunge and buying our own. OK, now let's talk about the different types of bulbs that we use in moth traps. First of all, we have the mercury vapour bulb, usually referred to as an MV bulb. These are high wattage bulbs running at either 125 or 250 watts and do give out an awful lot of light. So you need to think very carefully where your trap will be when you're running it, as this type of bulb can be a shortcut to falling out with your neighbours. If you have neighbours whose bedroom windows look out onto your garden, you may be better advised to choose one of the lower wattage types of bulbs that we will talk about shortly. These MV bulbs get very hot and can shatter explosively, and they will do if they get splashed by rain so it's imperative to use a rain guard with these. You may also want to wear some protective glasses when around this bulb when it is on. As it is a high wattage bulb, they are the most expensive to run, most noticeably early and late in the year when the nights are long, but they are very good at attracting moths. You also need to be aware that these bulbs are being phased out as part of the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Directive and will over time become unavailable. Secondly, we have actinic bulbs. These bulbs are essentially a fluorescent tube producing actinic light and give off little visible light. They are therefore much less likely to annoy your neighbours. They are usually between 8 and 40 watts, which makes them much cheaper to run than a 250 watt MV bulb. They work by producing more UV light than visible. They don't get hot when they're on and consequently won't shatter unexpectedly so making them a safer option. These are not being phased out and are easy to get hold of. Thirdly, we have the UV LED bulb. These are certainly the cheapest to run, some being as low as three watts, meaning that they are good for running off a battery, which gives good options for trapping away from home. Also, they don't get hot or shatter, making them a safe option in that respect, but they do emit ultraviolet light, which is damaging to our eyes. So some UV protective glasses should be worn. Make sure you look out for kite marked glasses. 
Again, these are not being phased out and are widely available. So what should I consider before buying a trap? Well, you need to think where you're going to be running it. Can you run a lead to, the, to a socket? Or would you need a generator, which can be noisy and expensive? Or do you want to use a battery? You could use a 12 volt car battery. They're heavy, so they're okay for home, but perhaps not so good for carrying around. Or a lithium ion battery, which is small, light, they are expensive to buy, and they're not waterproof, so you do need to be able to protect them from rain. Bulb choice. So again, that depends on how you're going to run your trap, which power source you're going to use, and will a very bright light annoy the neighbours? Cost is a big consideration, um, so you need to think how much you want to spend. And you would certainly be well advised to try and borrow a trap from an established mother to see if this is something that you really would like to pursue. And you need to work out how much time you've got because this is a highly addictive hobby. So um, be prepared. Here you have the links to the uh, three main companies that are selling moth traps in this country. So um, please do have a look at those. They're all good, well-established companies. If you do buy from NHBS, please do go through the link shown here on the slide as BC will get a small percentage from every sale. If you want to find out a bit more about moth trapping, the National Moth Recording Scheme website is a very useful and has lots of information on there. There is the Lancashire Moth Group and you'll find um, lots, again, more information on their website, particularly around recording and how to submit records and who to submit them to. And if you have any further questions, our branch moth officer, Justine Patton, will be more than happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you very much for listening and please do look out for further presentations um, around moth trapping.